Hey guys, welcome back to Tucky Range Time. Back with another episode of our 50 Beowulf Ballistic Gel Block Test Series. And this episode, we're looking at the Acme 330 grain round nose flat point uh, cast lead bullet. This is an HTC high tech coated bullet. And uh, here's a good look at that with the, uh, the Acme's signature color for, for most of the bullets that they load. And uh, so I typically don't do a lot of cast bullets in my AR platforms because if the gas port is actually cutting through the lands, it'll leave a sharp edge on that that will uh, shave off lead and coating as the bullets go past that. And uh, I have in the past experience with my 300 blackout uh, that that lead will make its way back into all the way through the gas tube into the bolt carrier group and the heat from the hot gas coming back through will melt that lead and actually will collect in the gas rings uh, of the bolt and it will tighten, basically it'll lock the bolt up and keep it from moving. So when that happens, the gun gets locked up. Um, first hand experience here, I, I did that uh, running uh, a cast 230 grain bullet uh, that I was casting through my 300 blackout doesn't seem to be as bad with polymer or HTC coating on it, but that stuff will still shave and go back down in there. So the exception of this is if the gas board happens to hit completely in the groove, then it doesn't seem to shave any at all. So it's really barrel dependent. And the only real way you can tell that is with a bore scope. <clears throat> so, uh, anyway, that's, uh, this bullet is going to be the exception to my rule on, on lead bullets. And I may, I, I had a subscriber <clears throat> a week or so ago actually make a comment asking about some cast lead bullets through an AR. And I was initially hesitant, but then, you know, it's kind of like for science. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, if, if I'm not running hundreds at a time, it's probably not going to be an issue. So I think I will probably go ahead and try to pick up some more of these, uh, these cast lead bullets uh, if I find them in some of these calibers I'm, I'm running and, and test those out. So anyway, let's take a quick look at this loading and then we'll get out to the range. All right, so here's uh, Acme's typical shipping boxes. Now, I've had a lot of boxes, a lot of big heavy cast bullets and stuff like this come in over the years that just completely destroyed the box and shipping. Uh, whether it be a lightweight cardboard box or a plastic box, those those tend to not fare very well when they start getting thrown around uh, by a delivery company. But uh, but these uh, high tech coated bullets from Acme, the boxes these ship in are this is a typical box for for every bullet I've ever ordered from them. So you know never never any worries there, and they actually make nice little storage boxes after the fact. Um, Hydrogen little gunpowder, and of course they're. Winchester primers that are actually uh, large pistol magnum, not not just large pistol. Uh, I don't have a sleeve to reflect that. And here is a look at these bullets and how much of this is done in the case. So, uh, all right, let's get to the range and uh, see how these things do. I, I was doubtful uh, that we would get a lot of expansion with this bullet, but um, I might have been surprised. So let's go check that out. All right, guys, next up in our 50 Beowulf Ballistic Gel Block Test Series is the Acme 330 grain cast lead bullet with a high-tech coating applied to it. And this is a round nose flat point bullet. And I don't like to run a lot of these in my ARs because uh, uh, some barrels, depending on where the gas port's cut in relation to the lands and the grooves, will actually shave this high-tech coating or lead or both and send it all the way back down into the bolt carrier group. Uh, where that usually collects in the gas rings on the bolt and, uh, and and can lock it up once you get enough of that in there. So I, I try to shoot these sparingly out of my ARs. And uh, for the sake of this test though, I actually had a viewer subscriber uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, asking about running some of these. And uh, we had a little discussion about that. And after the discussion, I got to thinking, well, you know, it's not gonna hurt to run a few. So I am gonna try to test a few of these as we go along. All right. First shot for Acme, 330 grain. <coughs> All right, velocity of 1970.4 foot per second. And let's go check out the catch.
All right, so all this cloudy, white pasty stuff looking stuff here is actually from where this gel expands and then drops back down so quick when this bullet hits. And you can see it here around the top. Uh, I'm gonna put the torch on this and heat it up and then we'll be back to take a look at it. All right, so the wound track you're seeing right here is from this 330 grain Acme bullet. And it appears that we did get expansion on this bullet. Uh, we've got a nice large permanent wound cavity here down to about five inches. Uh, a decent size wound cavity on down around nine or 10. And then it looks like we turn into straight line penetration. We've got some lead fragments right in this area with the uh, red high tech coating on it. Another one here. And we lose this bullet at about 27 inches. So we did get expansion. We did have some uh, shards of lead coming off and we did not get a catch though. So let's go back and try another one. All right, so we had expansion on that first bullet, but no catch. And uh, that shot was a little bit closer to the top of the gel from the angle I was shooting at. So I'm gonna try to get a little bit lower. And, and I would say part of what curved that up out of the gel was the, the way that it expanded. So let's give another one of these a try and see what we can get. Velocity of 1905, standard deviation of 32.6 over two shots. And let's go see if we got the catch on this one. All right, wound track starting right here for this one. And uh, it's the lower wound track that runs down through here. Looks like we've got Again, we got some uh, expansion on this bullet up here. A nice permanent wound cavity down to six, seven inches. A little more down to about nine or 10 and it settles down some. Looks like we might be doing a little bit of flipping and spinning. Comes on through. We end up shedding a pedal at this point and it leaves the gel block at 25 and a half inches. And then another shard here at 30 and a quarter. And we did get a catch on this one. Looks like we're sitting in here at about 36 inches with what's left of this bullet. So we'll get this dug out and uh, see how much weight we've got left on this. And look at the expansion that we got on this lead bullet too. And uh, have, have a little bit more on that when we get back to the shop. All right, guys, I want to try one more of these uh, 330 grain high tech coated bullets from Acme and see if I can get another catch. Uh, the expansion we got on that last one was pretty good. And, uh, you know, the pedals that we shed, uh, it's kind of surprising. So, just want to try one more of these. All right, so we lost the block. I've been waiting on that all day. Surprised it took this long to happen. Um, velocity of 1926 for a three shot average velocity of 1934. Standard deviation of 27.1 and foot pounds of energy weighing in at 2719. So, uh, pretty nice on the, on the energy on that one. All right, let's go see if we got another catch. All right, guys, so uh, similar results with this one. Uh, got the low wound track here, and this is the block that ended up in the gravel, so it's pretty dirty. Uh, we did get expansion. We still got a similar wound channel from what we had on the first two shots. Got some leg fragments coming off here and more at 24 inches. And total penetration on this round looks like 27 and 3 quarter inches. We got a nice big mushroom head out here, and... Uh, Actually pretty excited to get these dug out and back to the shop to take a look at these. All right, so here's the results. And uh, this this bullet, actually, I was surprised that we got this much expansion out of it. Um, previous lead bullets that I've fired uh, with the 44 mag tended to just zip right on through the gel block, but these actually did mushroom open here 
quite a bit. So uh, I'm curious what the Brunel is on these. Maybe it's a little bit softer <clears throat> to help aid in some of this expansion. But um, so this expanded and we did, we lost quite a bit of weight on these. You can see here and here where the pails are shed off of this one. And on this side here as well, you can see this side where the pails have it shed. And these pedals were significant weights. Uh, several of them actually continued on and then left the gel block. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> good expansion, good penetration, and uh, you know, a lot of lot of side wound channels, a lot of a lot of extra bleeders out of these. Uh, some quick numbers: thirty one point nine inches of average penetration with this bullet. So, uh, uh, with what was left of it. Okay, so uh, so this does look like a big tube of lipstick. Uh, you, know, you, you hear that a lot with some of these bullets, but I, I think this one may be more than uh, any of the others I've loaded just because of the, the, the shape and the size and the width of it. But uh, a lot better performance out of this bullet than what I was expecting. Uh, some numbers coming up. <clears throat> Average velocity of 1934.1 feet per second. Standard deviation over three shots was 27.1. Eh, not great, not necessarily horrible for, for a bullet like this though. Um, energy, now here's the, here's the number, <clears throat> 2,741 foot pounds of energy for this 330 gram bullet traveling at 1,934 foot per second. So massive amount of energy and that's probably what uh, led to the expansion that we saw. Um, <clears throat> Average expansion was 0.75 inches, which was 49.5%, uh, so almost 50% expansion on this. And uh, weight retention, average weight retention out of 330 grains was 267. So we lost uh, over 60 grains average. And like I said, there were some big chunks coming off this bullet. 80.9% uh, weight retention on this. So uh, we, we lost basically 20% of our weight and 31.9 uh, and uh, inches of, of overall penetration on the average. So <clears throat> um, this bullet would work on a lot of stuff. Now here's the best part of this. Uh, the, the, some of the other bullets that we've been looking at, um, although the, the weight retention was better, the expansion was more consistent, uh, they were a buck 20 a bullet. These here uh, were, were not that much. And, and I'm not going to say that number because YouTube is starting to flag my videos. If I actually say a number, uh, with, with an amount on it, uh, they're actually flagging those videos and having to send them through review. So I'm not going to mention this, but go to Titan reloading. This is where, uh, I source most of my Acme bullets <clears throat> and check these out. <clears throat> they have Acme bullets for uh, 50 caliber, 458 for 458 SOCOM or 4570. Uh, they have these in 44 mag and 45 and 30 cal, uh, big heavy 265 grain 30 cal bullets, uh, all the way down to, to 40s and 9s and 357s. So, and actually, uh, I don't know if you've seen the previous video I did on the, the 32 ACP, the little branded Tomcat. Uh, the 32 caliber bullet, uh, that 78 grain I loaded there also came from Acme, uh, and, and I sourced those through Titan reloading. So, so go check out Titan reloading and, uh, and take a look at these Acme bullets over there. They also keep a, a wide selection of pistol and rifle bullets, but one catch it's either Acme or it's Hornady. That's all they sell. So if you're looking for some Hornady bullets, that's the place to go as well. And prices are competitive with all the other major boxes, including my affiliates. Uh, anyway, we, we won't talk about that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Just a great company, and I've been shopping with them for probably the last eight or ten years. So, uh, all right, guys. If you haven't already, come up here to the, the information button and go to my website. Check out my affiliate partners. Anything you do purchase from them uh, after following my links will result in uh, uh, a little bit of Revenue coming back to the page to help offset my cost. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave those in the comments. And as always, hit that like and subscribe button. Feel free to share my videos. Uh, <clears throat> right down below the video, there's a little link that says share. You click on that. You can share it directly to uh, other social media sites or you can copy 
that link and paste it anywhere you want. So if you're in any other reloading groups or caliber specific groups on um, MeWe and Facebook and anywhere else and uh, something comes up in discussion, you can say, oh yeah, KRT had a video on that. Feel free to come back and copy these videos and, and share them on those sites. Uh, I actually see how often my videos get shared and you guys are sharing them quite a bit. And, and I can tell <clears throat> when my shares go up, my subscribers go up right behind it. So you guys helping uh, get my videos out there and getting them in front of people is actually helping the page grow as well. So I do appreciate that, guys. All right, back to Kentucky Range Time. This is the third video of seven on the 50 Beowulf. And uh, these will be coming out here within a couple of days and probably hitting a couple of two to three days apart. So keep an eye open on that. and. Catch you on the next one.